Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, we're going back to Abu uh, now, uh, but uh, let's see. Do we go to Emmanuel or uh, our correspondent in Kano? We also expect some updates from those uh, towns to give us updates now. Uh, but uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. But GT, uh, looking at all of this and how uh, this is playing, the one particularly in Akwaibom. What do you think? Well, you know, it is it's very scary. And when uh, Mike Guinea was uh, speaking, I could feel for him. Um, yes, he's, you know, you have to keep uh, a bold face and then give assurances. Mm. Uh, my, my apologies, we've got this breaking news uh, just coming through now. We understand that uh, the Supreme Court has affirmed an order of interim for feature made by the Lagos Division of the Federal High Court in respect of the sum of $8.4 million linked to the wife of former President Goodluck Jonathan, Mrs. Patience Jonathan. Well, the Apex Court, led by Justice Datijo Muhammad, in a unanimous judgment, dismissed the appeal by the former First Lady and directed her to return the Federal High Court to show cause why uh, the funds should not be permanently forfeited to the federal government. Uh, we also understand that uh, the AFCC had approached the Federal High Court in Lagos last year with an ex parte application seeking the forfeiture of the sum of $8.4 million and other various sums in various bank accounts linked to the wife of the former president. So we'll get you more on that um, as we get them. Please go ahead, Chitty. Yes, uh, I was making the point that I. Uh, it's a square situation. Here is an electoral umpire, uh, Eric, who is compelled by circumstances now to give assurances. Yet, uh, he doesn't have troops. He doesn't have uh, armed men to keep the peace. So he is making the best of a very ugly situation. The distraction of reacting to the arson that had taken place shouldn't be ordinarily one of the borders of an electoral chief. It should be focused on something else. But he's not being called upon to improvise, to think out of the box, to... The election shouldn't be war. All of us are here now, but can we say with certitude that people will not be killed in this country tomorrow? Uh -huh. it, it, it's, it's, th there is a morbid feeling you have when you are approaching an election. That shouldn't be so. And so I, I, I can feel for Nigerians. I can feel for myself. This shouldn't be happening. And so you have that situation in Akwaibom State now. All the reports from other states also, you know, point to the possibility of, you know, security breaches tomorrow. That shouldn't be so. And, and, and um, the, in the prevailing circumstances, there are things should, that should be done. Assurance was the word you used, Chamberlain. But what of insurance? Those youth coppers, those persons who are going to conduct the election, who are going to be in arm's way. It's, it's, it's funny. When an American president is saying, you know, I won't send troops, uh, they won't put their boots on the ground, we won't keep them in arm's way and all yeah. that. Yeah. Now, those who are conducting a civil election, now, we have to contemplate that they may be in arm's way. Because you are now talking about safety yeah. of our election. So, there are things that should be done. Insurance should be part of it. Ensuring that they are protected while they are doing the job. Because the, 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 there is a dilemma here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, 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 All right. You. Well, we'll come back to this. My apologies. We need to also get to uh, Kano. Uh, we've got our correspondent, Idris Jibrin, also standing by to give us an update. Idris, what are people thinking? I know, yes, there's elections, but uh, what's the update? Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much, Chamberlain. Like you see, 
the atmosphere in Kano State so far, I can, we can say so far so good. Uh, preparation, everything is going on smoothly. Uh, INEC has confirmed that they have already delivered both sensitive and non-sensitive materials to their area offices within the 44 local government areas of the state. But those local governments that are within the metropolitan city of Kano will get their materials very early in the morning from the area offices. But other local governments that are far away from the commercial city of Kano will get their materials today by the grace of God. On the aspect of uh, security, I have also spoken with the police commissioner and of course the command public relations officer who confirmed to me that uh, adequate security measures have been put in place in order to ensure a successful conduct of the election. It is also interesting to note that yesterday all the political party candidates signed another peace accord in order to formally agree with the security guidelines throughout the election process. So I must tell you that the voters in Kano State are actually getting off ahead of tomorrow and preparation so far so good, everything is going on smoothly. We have not had any case of any incidences of violence or any other thing that uh, it's coming off as of this moment. But we can't predict anything. We will continue to follow things up. And as soon as we hear anything abnormal or something going on differently, we will definitely let the people know. But for now, the atmosphere is cool and everything is going on smoothly. Idris, uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, that sounds encouraging, guys. It is encouraging, especially to think of our Colonel State, uh, where it has been in the news for some very peculiar reasons, and uh, trying to see the the political bigwigs that are there and how it played out for the presidential elections. Mm -hmm. You do remember the Gonkosu, the factions of uh, different factions, as, as it were, and how uh, all of this culminated into the vote for the um, uh, for the centre. But this is going to be totally different in Kano for the governorship elections. You have the APC uh, incumbent in place there. He'll mm. still try to um, ensure that he still gets back, while um, the opposition parties, especially the PDP, will be trying to see if they can rest the power. But the big question for Kano State is, yeah. can they succeed at the end of the day? Comfort. It's the only word I could have picked there. You know, we, between us here, we always talk about two particular words, strategy and hope. I think this is a lot more cheering you know, news coming from... Um, so far. Children. So far, especially being Kano. We remember, of course, just as you made reference, the gap between the, yeah. the, the one who led the, the election in Kano and um, the follow-up, the other, other political parties and all of that. But this is a lot more local. What kind of um, what will play out in the elections tomorrow? Uh, we wait to see, and um, I cannot but hope. I cannot but hope that this is going to be the kind of election that we're. Is it that bad? I cannot but hope. Yes, I mean, <laughs> you know, because I mean, it sounds, people just say I cannot but well, hope. Just because Frank Mbati tell you well, what they're doing, but he's he in hope. Abuja. We're talking about Kano here, and you, just as you know, I mean, it, it also goes back to what um, uh, yeah, has been saying all the while about you know security and all of that. We need to re-engineer, but. Where do we take the first step when we talk about re-engineering this, this whole electoral process? Putting hope aside, well, because I, hope is not going to work. Come uh, on. I wish. Hope doesn't work. <laughs> strategy is the only thing that works, especially for elections. So if you don't have the strategy, <laughs> okay, so what strategy? Give us advocating for strategy. Then you, you'll be shooting yourself in the What strategy are we to do? We need an, a strategy to deal with our security nightmare, not just our security problem during electioneering. And so at the base, if we have that strategy, uh, we'll be able to deal with the specificity of electoral challenges that we have. And what was this strategy, just to start with? You know, we come here, you know, guests have been talking about what we need to do, how we need to talk to politicians. And now your correspondent in Kano told you about a peace treaty, yeah. a peace accord, I wish a peace accord could do the magic, mm. you know. But magic, you know, doesn't solve a security dilemma, right? And so, for me, what is this grand strategy that we need? Just to start with, each time you hear about 
the military being called in to aid policemen to enforce the law. What does that tell you at the very basic level? It tells you that we're under police as a country. It tells you that we have 200 million people and we have 375,000 policemen. It tells you that even the ratio of policing that we should have per 1,000, that we are not anything near it. It tells you, therefore, to improvise, we then have to have a civil defense corps. We then have to have one piece core that was not allowed to exist the other time. We then have to have the military coming in. We then have to have immigration, customs, even federal safety core now being mobilized for an election. So the strategy that we need is to rethink our security challenges and how we are going to deal with them. And so people can talk about this police force. And we can be doing that for an eternity. I'm telling us, and this is a cliche right now, that is an absurdity to have a unitary police in a federal Nigeria. People have told us that we are not mature for a federal police. They said that, yes, yeah, our ethnicity will not allow us. They've told us that state governments will turn police in their own state into their own army to terrorize their opponents. Is that not you can be saying all those things. No, it's not. Because, look, when people say this, as a lawyer, I just look at such person and say, do you think that the, the process of lawmaking, of crafting a law, of using a law as a social engineering tool can deal with all these problems? Command and control, funding, are very basic to a police institution. So at the level of the state, how do you control it? You assume that it's the governor that will be the commander-in-chief of that state police? When you can have a state police service board that will have all the stakeholders as members of that board to control it. So is it that we are, we are not this creative? Is, is it that what has worked everywhere Mr. GT, cannot who, work here? Who, who will fund that kind of arrangement? The state will fund it. The state will fund Indeed, Part of the reason why state governments have so much money to steal in the name of security vote that they don't account for is because you don't make policing to be on the state ballot. So you think that it's a federal government you know, problem. And so you don't type policing to the political fortune and survivor of that incumbent in power. You don't tie power, electricity to it in that state. So it is the federal government that talks about power. So those who are contesting in Lagos now, they have no problem with power. And so, 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 so what, 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 what then at a local level do you want to achieve? Because he who plays the piper dictates the tone. And the argument has been that if the state is the one to fund this kind of arrangement, then the state might as well have control much more than even the players uh, in that I'm committee. When I'm talking about the state, I'm talking about the state as an entity, not as a governor, as an in individual. Look, the state, for example, funds some other things in the state. Fund the hospital that is supposed to be available to all funds other things. And even now, by default, the state is funding this federal or unitary police domiciled in the state through their instrumentality of state security trust fund. Like Lagos State, all the bikes that you see, all the motors that you see, all the cars that you see on the road, who do you think is buying them? You think it's the federal government? No, but do you realize how powerful the governors of the states in this country are? I know that they are powerful. But I also know that they must be made to operate in a democracy under the rule of law. The maxim is that the you be so high, the law is taller than you are. I, I, I'm, 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 it's not that I'm, I'm dead and, and, and blind to our realities here. But I'm saying that if we do what is right by ourselves, we can solve some of these problems that we think are intractable. Really? Uh,